What's up, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle coming back to you with another fantasy baseball video. And my apologies, it has taken so long to get another one of these out. Things are just chaotic and hectic beyond belief right now. I'm sure you all can imagine. When life gets busy, sometimes we just have to prioritize, and I've been trying to get these videos out to you. I've had them prepared and ready to go, just haven't been able to record them as quickly as I would like. So keep an eye out. We're going to be dropping some fantasy baseball stuff for you here still to get you ready for the season, okay? Just keep in mind, we help get you ready for the season, but because we do so much fantasy football stuff, it's hard to take that into the season. So we'll definitely get you ready to uh, to knock your draft out of the park, no pun intended, and get ready for a successful fantasy baseball season so for this video we're going to talk about some draft tips and advice so if you haven't drafted yet perfect this video is for you if you've already drafted maybe you're going to jump into another league that's okay learn from that draft and take some of these things along with you to prepare for that one thing i want you to keep in mind while i'm talking though there might be a couple of things here that you say yeah kyle we know we understand we don't need to know that Maybe somebody here is new to fantasy baseball. Maybe somebody here is new to fantasy sports as a whole and they're looking for some help. I want to make sure that I cover everything to get everybody prepared for the 2020 fantasy baseball season. So let's jump into it and let's talk about some tips and advice I have for you while drafting your fantasy baseball team this year. And my first area to take a look at is knowing your league. This is, like I said, basic stuff, right? Know your league before you get started. There's a big difference between rotisserie baseball and head-to-head -head matchups. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Know what one you're doing. Are you going to have head-to-head? -head? Are you going to have rotisserie? We're going to talk about that a little bit more uh, later on in the show because uh, there's some different draft strategies that I have for you depending on what that is. Now, me personally, I love a head-to-head -head league. I love facing off against everyone else in my league. That's one of my favorite things to do. That's why I, I prefer head-to-head -head matchups. For a rotisserie league, though, a rotisserie league is, is a little bit better indication of how your team was as a whole all season long. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, Roto, you're really looking at, at, at categories throughout the season and it's from week one all the way through till the end and these different categories are going to have different weights depending on how you finish in them so you might finish like first in one category fifth in another second in one seventh in another whatever it may be and that's going to average out your finishing position for the end of the year for head to head you're actually going to face off against another opponent and whoever typically takes the most categories either takes a win for the week or they take win for each categories but again, too, what categories should you know? If you play fantasy football, you know how customizable fantasy football can be. Well, fantasy baseball is twice that in terms of customization because there are so many different categories you can choose from. Um, you know, for starting pitchers, maybe you don't want to go with wins. Maybe you want to go with quality starts instead. Uh, with hitters, a lot of people have moved away from average and have focused more on on base percentage and slugging or on base plus slugging. So know what categories categories you're going to be using. How many categories? Are you doing just your standard five by five? Are you going to be doing a seven by seven? Are you going to get crazy and do a 10 by 10? A lot of different things that you're going to do there. So know your categories because that's going to play a huge, huge role in what you draft heading into the season. With fantasy football, you know, hey, it's a PPR league, so you know we're gonna we're gonna value maybe wide receivers a little bit more, or we're gonna value those pass catching backs a little bit. You know, typically your your categories are standard in fantasy football. Your positions are what change the most. With fantasy baseball, though, based on I mean, you could be missing you could be missing average, and if you don't have an averages in category, then that's going to be, pay huge dividends for you to target some certain players within that. And maybe you have strikeouts. If you have strikeouts, then you have to keep an eye. So it's it's so customizable that you have to know what categories that you're going to be playing with all season long. And for positions, got to know your positions as well. Just missed it, mentioned it a second ago with fantasy uh, football, with what positions. Uh, you know, you could have, you know, three wide receivers, two running backs, a couple of flex, a super flex, different things like that. Kickers, no kickers, whatever it may be. With baseball, do you have a catcher, a first baseman? Uh, do you play all the infield positions and then do a corner infielder and a middle infielder? Do you have five outfielders? Do you have two utilities? Do you have one utility? Do you have just a DH? 
what I a lot of different things for your outfielders. You could have three outfielder spots. You could also have right field, left field, and center field. So your outfielders could also be split down. That's a big one that I see people not realizing sometimes. Is some leagues will say, "Oh, you have to have center field eligibility to play." And they draft somebody that has left field, not realizing that they can't put them in center field just because they think, oh, I just have to draft three outfielders. So those are some different things that you need to be looking at. Again, know your league. Going into it, if you've been doing it for a while, you're already going to know. But if you're jumping into a new one, that's when things start to get a little bit tricky. you got to get yourself up to speed before the draft. Now, what do we do? in terms of positional strategy. So this is one that we definitely take a look at quite a bit in terms of positions. So my first one right there, hitters, hitters, hitters. My first two picks are always going to be hitters. Let me tell you why I tend to fade pitching in fantasy baseball couple different reasons. Number one, my strategy in season, I feel very comfortable working the waiver wire for pitching. I feel very comfortable identifying pitching throughout the season and looking for different markers to tell me, yeah, this guy is absolutely on a roll or this guy is getting lucky. So that's one of the reasons that I do it. If you're not comfortable with that, then work on that a little bit and see if you can get to that comfort zone. Another reason, though, especially if you are really, if you're drafting earlier on in spring training, hitters can be a little bit more sporadic in terms of injuries. So if you have a pitcher go down in spring training with an injury, let's say we're not going to, this guy's not going to throw for a week, or this guy's not going to throw for a couple of weeks. With pitchers, you've got to work your way back to a point where you can go out and pitch deep into games. So as you're working your way back, maybe you're for, maybe you have a bullpen session, then you have another bullpen session. Well, then you get a chance to get into a game, but now you're only going to throw 50 pitches. Now you're only going to throw 60, 75. So you have you have a long way to ramp up, especially in spring training. If you get hurt early as a pitcher in spring training and you miss time, that's that that is a lot of time extra that you have to take to get yourself back up to a a certain strength to be able to pitch deep into games for hitters it's a little bit different because for a hitter if you go down with an injury and maybe you have to miss a week or two you get back in there and maybe you maybe if you do miss a couple of weeks maybe they leave you in spring training a little bit longer maybe they send you on a rehab assignment whatever it may be maybe you just need a couple of extra games to get your timing down maybe you just need a little bit more time you know in the cage maybe you just need a little bit more time uh, on the backfields where a lot of times they'll have simulated games where they won't have really a whole lot of people playing the field but they might have a pitcher throwing and you're going through different counts maybe you just need a few more of those games it's a little bit easier for hitters to kind of work their way back than it is for pitchers and with pitchers you got to be careful of those dreaded tommy john surgeries you're i mean luis severino is a guy that we've already lost for the season right if you spend a high pick on him if you've drafted already you've lost him for the year so that's why I am always looking at hitters first. Plus, hitters to me, if I have hitters, if I have really a really good lineup throughout the entire season, I can, in my opinion, work my way around having to go in with some pitchers and stream them and stream some pitchers. So if if I've got a week where I've got tough matchups with some pitchers, I feel comfortable streaming them in and out. So I don't want to spend really high draft capital on pitchers when I can potentially move them around and get better matchups as the year go on. You don't really stream hitters. It's a little bit harder to do that because you have so many more positions. Also, I fade saves. If you're in a league that has closers and you have saves as a category... I will spend maybe a mid-round pick on a closer that I'm like, okay, this is a guy I definitely feel like I can lock in, and then I wait. I either spend my last few picks on saves, or I don't draft that many closers at all. Maybe I draft a bunch of extra starting pitchers, and then as injuries happen or ineffectiveness happens at the closer positions for a lot of different teams, then at that point, I start grabbing those guys off waiver wire. So it's really important to know the bullpens of major league teams. Know, know who is getting holds. Take a look online. If your league doesn't have holds, that fine. that's fine. But take a look online. Find who's leading the league in holds. People who are leading the league in holds are typically going to be next up if somebody gets hurt as a closer to get save opportunities. So keep an eye on that as well. 
Normally for my pitcher, I'm going to find my ace in round three or four. That's where I'm going to be looking for my ace. That's where I want to go ahead and start finding that guy. In my must-have video, I talked about Shane Bieber, and he's a guy that if I draft him in round three as my ace, I am good with it. I would love this year to have a top four pick and to be able to get a top four player in the first and then at the back of the second round get another stable bat and then get my ace at the beginning of round three. That's what I would love to do. So typically round three or four, depending on how your draft is going. If you're in a 10-man league or an 8-man league, something like that, then yeah, maybe you can wait a little bit longer on that starting pitching. If you're in a 12, 14, 16, something like that, you're going to have to get him a little bit early. But I want to have my one ace, my one reliable arm throughout the season. That That's the guy that I know I can count on. I'm going to stream and I'm going to pick and choose guys off the waiver wire as we go through the rest. Even if someone is a reach... For thin positions, catcher and second baseman are too particular this year that might end up being uh, a little bit more thin. For the catcher position, I mean, uh, you've got JT Romilto, uh, Gary Sanchez, Yasmani Grandal. You've got uh, Contreras, too, from the Wilson Contreras from the Chicago Cubs. Those are really your top catchers. After that, it gets really thin. However, I'm going to be doing kind of a breakout video. I'm going to be doing other videos as well. You're going to see catchers come up more and more throughout the season because I think there's some some good some good values at that position. But don't be afraid to reach. If you're like, man, I really want to have Gary Sanchez He's a guy that's going to hit for power. He's a guy that I really want to have at my catcher's position. If you want Riamuto, if you want him, if you want Contreras, whatever it may be, get them early. Okay, At those thin positions, reach a little bit if you need to. Don't pay too much attention to that ADP. That goes for any position, but for these very thin positions, you got to keep an eye out for that as well. And wait on some of those deeper positions. So like outfield, you have a ton of outfielders that you can choose from. You can get some really good values. For me, for outfield, if I've got a top four pick and I've got to choose between Betts and Trout, if i got to choose between Acuna and Yelich, if i got to choose between those guys, that's fine. Grab one of those guys at the very top. Absolutely, 100%. Nothing wrong with that. But then wait on your other outfielders. It's a deep position. You can find some really, really good um some really, really good uh, opportunities there later in the draft to get very good draft value. One thing I want to jump back with talking about uh, uh, catchers for a second. One thing I like to do with catchers, just as a little side note, multiple position eligibility. Yes, Monty Grandal has catcher and first uh, first base eligibility. I like to draft catchers that are going to be playing not only catcher, but could be playing elsewhere as well, because then you know that they are going to be playing more often and you don't have to carry two catchers and as, in some leagues you're going to have to carry two catchers because catchers are only going to play maybe four times a week possibly five they're going to be getting a couple of days off here and there some of your top tier catchers might play five to six times a week shoot for those guys that play a lot of games shoot for those guys salvador perez is one of those guys he's had good numbers throughout his career but one of the things that made him such a good fantasy asset was he played so much he played all the time he barely got any time off so that's why he was such a great fantasy asset for so many years this year staying away from him a little bit but however that is definitely something you want to keep in mind when you are drafting No, during your draft. Some things to keep in mind as you are progressing through your draft. Number one, keep an eye on the rosters around you. Okay, That might be, again, something that you already know, you understand. You've been playing fantasy sports for a while. But a lot of people might not realize that. Keep an eye on those rosters. Okay, Look at those rosters around you. See who's drafting before and after you and what positions they're taking. Just keep that in mind because that is really, really good information to have as you go forward. Let's say they spend early, uh, the guys on either side of you spend, or gals, either one, spend early picks on catchers. You are able to keep an eye on that and you're like, hey, I've got catchers coming up I really want. Two teams in front of me already have catchers. I might be able to wait and let that wrap back around to me and grab a different position that they are hurting in and they need to get. So keep that in mind. And find value for certain categories later in your draft. Power is one of them. I don't love to spend high picks on power players. I like to spend high picks on five tool players. Guys that are going to give me a good average, they're going to drive in runs, stolen bases, all of that. Okay, That is what I like to spend those high picks on. Later in your draft, for power, you can get like 90th overall right now, Josh Donaldson. 159, Edwin Encarnacion. 169, Chris Davis. 
Chris Davis didn't have a great year last year, but he had three really good years before that in terms of power. You can get him really late this year. He's an awesome buy if you are looking for power later in your draft. Hunter Dozier is another one at 179. Guy that's going to hit for some power. Find those players later in your draft that can help support that power so you can focus on that average and consistency a little bit earlier in your draft. Speaking of consistency versus upside, talked about the difference between Roto and head-to-head -head earlier in this video with consistency and upside. For consistency, I like consistency for head-to-head. -head. I like high upside for rotisserie leagues. The one reason that is is because high upside in rotisserie leagues tends to balance itself out a little bit more because it's a full year worth of looking at something. Consistency in head to head, if you have a couple of down weeks worth of players, that's a lot of that's a lot of matchups you could use, especially if each category can be a win or a loss. So if you're doing a rotisserie or a head to head, that can that can alter what I want to do. If I'm in a head to head league, give me as much consistency as possible. If I'm in a roto league, I'm looking for a little bit more upside because it's going to balance out through the year. So even if I have a couple of bad weeks, laws of average in baseball, a couple of bad weeks, they're going to be hot at some point in time. So that's going to average out. You're not going to have to worry about it. And one of the last things I want to talk about too, top prospects. Know the top prospects that are going to be coming up, especially around that Super 2 deadline where um, teams gave, gain an extra year of arbitration with players. Um, so there's a date uh, a few weeks into the season where after players have passed that, teams can gain an extra year of arbitration or basically a year of control of that player. So know those top players coming up because they might not go in your draft right away. Or if they do, you can get it maybe towards the later rounds and stash them. So always keep an eye on those top prospects. Well, there you have it, Headliner Nation. Again, just wanted to throw out some draft tips and advice. We are getting into the heat of fantasy baseball draft season, so I wanted to make sure that you kind of saw where I'm coming from when I'm doing my fantasy baseball draft. So, Headliner Nation, appreciate you tuning in to this episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Make sure you hit that like button below. Make sure you leave any comments with questions that you have, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one, Headliner Nation.